Welcome to worship with First United Church of Oak Park and our Blue Christmas service. This is a service that is meant for all people. Whatever burdens you might be carrying, you are welcome here just as you are. This is a sacred space, one where you can remove the mask you wear or unload the things that you carry. There is no need for pretense and there is no expectation of you. Only hope, love, and peace for you, and joy that you are here. We pray this will be a meaningful experience for you. Know that you are not alone. Let us settle in and prepare our minds and our hearts for this time together. If you feel comfortable, I invite you to close your eyes, knowing that you can open them at any time. Let your arms relax however is most comfortable for you. Feel your feet grounded on the floor and feel the floor rise up to meet you. Let your body be still and feel steadied. You're going to start with a few deep, calming breaths from our bellies. We will breathe in through our nose and out through our mouths. And as we breathe in, our belly will expand. And as we exhale, our belly will contract. So in through your nose, Belly expands, out through your mouth, belly contracts. Again, inhale, exhale. One more deep breath in, and let it all go. I invite you to continue focusing on your belly breathing while you listen to this poem. Why is there no room at Christmas for sadness or a place for hearts that are blue? Because all the world wants to hear is a word of cheer, not a sigh, not a tear, not from you. Why is there no room at Christmas for loneliness or a place for your emptiness and grief. Because all the world wants is peace, mistletoe and Christmas trees, not heartache that mars its beliefs. Why is there no room at Christmas for sickness, anxiety, or fears? Because all the world wants is health, prosperity, and wealth, not hardship and tears. It seems there's no room at Christmas for Jesus and no place for his family too, because the world would not share and no one really seemed to care. So a stable will just have to do. But I tell you, there is room in the season of Christmas for sadness and for grief. There will always be a place in God's heart for you that is filled with hope and peace. You can never be separated from the love of God. Our God knows about pain and loss because it was felt on the cross. So this candle here is lit for you. For Christ knows what it's like to be blue. Let us pray. 
Gracious God, we acknowledge that this is a season of joy and celebration for many as we prepare for the birth of Jesus. But we also acknowledge that these celebrations can ring hollow in our hearts if we are experiencing grief, depression, or pain. We don't feel like joining the celebration if we are walking in sadness or distress. There are many hurts and troubles in this season. Speak to us, O oh God. Speak to us words of comfort, healing, and restoration, and give us hope. Will you pray along with me? Come, Holy Spirit, be present with us. Heal and restore us. Where we are hurting, comfort us. Where we are experiencing sorrow, show us compassion. Emmanuel, God be with us. Please pray with me. God of love and comfort, who promises an end to all mourning, crying, and pain, be present with us now as we bring our struggles before you. As you became flesh, experiencing all the grief and joy of being human, living and dying among us in this troubled world, Send now your Holy Spirit, our comforter, to hold us in your love as we acknowledge all the complex emotions that this season brings. With the lighting of these candles, may your presence shine among us and warm the bleak midwinter of our hearts. O come, Emmanuel, and fill the whole world with heaven's peace. Amen. 
we are going to light Advent candles, but we're going to light them with different symbolic meaning than we do through the Advent season. Usually we light four candles. Each one represents something different. First, hope, peace, joy, and then love. But for tonight, we're going to light these candles to symbolize grief, pain, fear, and struggles. If you have your own Advent calendar candles at home, or just four candles, that will do, you are invited to join us in lighting them. For each candle, we will hear some scripture and liturgy, light our candle, and then we will have a short time of silent meditation before singing a familiar verse of a familiar hymn together. Please join in as you feel called to do so. If you would like to sing, you may. If you would prefer to lean into the silence, you can. Do whatever feels necessary to you in this time and space. Hear now this word from the Gospel of John. When Mary came where Jesus was and saw him, she knelt at his feet and said to him, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. When Jesus saw her weeping and the Jews who came with her also weeping, he was greatly disturbed in spirit and deeply moved. He said, where have you laid him? They said to him, Lord, come and see. Jesus began to weep. We light this first candle to honor our grief. Little griefs and large griefs Grief over loved ones who have died, over relationships that have ended or are strained, retirement, children moving away or getting married, our grief over the myriad of losses we have experienced. Often it is during these special holiday times that these times that are filled with memories that we feel most deeply the absence of those people or things that we have loved and lost. May this candle bring light to our grief. from on high and order all things far and nigh to us the path of knowledge show and help us in that way to go rejoice Rejoice, Emmanuel shall come to you, O Israel. Hear now the word. 
Come to me, all you that are weary and are carrying heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. We light the second candle to acknowledge our pain. The pain of physical ailments, of addiction, the pain of mental illness, the pain of troubled relationships, the pain and debilitating isolation of depression or anxiety, all the pain and burdens that we experience. In the midst of the joy of the Christmas season, we sometimes feel the need to hide the pain that we feel so that we won't burden others. But our pain is nothing to be ashamed of. May this candle bring light to our pain. Israel, my servant Jacob, whom I have chosen, the offspring of Abraham, my friend, you whom I took from the ends of the earth and called from its farthest corners, saying to you, you are my servant. I have chosen you and not cast you off. Do not fear, for I am with you. Do not be afraid, for I am your God. I will strengthen you. I will help you. I will uphold you with my victorious right hand. We light the third candle to name our fears, fears of uncertainty, fears of being alone, fears of those who are not like us or whom we don't understand, fears of change or stagnation, Fears of what the future may or may not hold. All the fears that hold us back from living life to the fullest. Just as the shepherds, Magi, King Herod, Mary, and Joseph were filled with fear that first Christmas, so we too live in a world and a time that is filled with fear. May this candle bring light to our fears.
flehen, how still we see you lie. Above your deep and dreamless sleep, the silent stars go by. Yet in your dark streets shines forth the everlasting Hear now this word from the book of Revelation. Then I saw a new heaven and a new earth. For the first heaven and the first earth had passed away and the sea was no more. And I saw the holy city, the new Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. And I heard a loud voice from the throne saying, See, the home of God is among mortals. God will dwell with them. They will be God's people. And God will be with them. Wipe away every tear from their eyes. Death will be no more. Mourning and crying and pain will be no more. For the first things have passed away. And the one who was seated on the throne said, See, I am making all things new. Write this, for these words are trustworthy and true. And then said to me, It is done. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. We light the fourth candle to recognize the struggles of our world, the struggles of those who suffer the effects of war, of those who are in need of food and shelter, the struggles of those who are fighting to survive diseases and illnesses like cancer and this virus, the struggles of those who long for freedom of oppression the struggles of those who are experiencing all that we have named this evening. And our shared struggle of a world desperately in need of God's promised realm of justice and peace. May this candle bring to light our struggles. space for you to offer the prayers of your hearts. You can offer your prayers in the chat if you wish. 
in response to any prayer that we see shared, we will all respond to you wherever we are. God, grant us your peace. Let us pray. Gracious and loving God, for this night, this space, and all those present here, we give you thanks. We have heard your word spoken. We have sung, we have spent time in silent reflection and prayer. Make your presence known to us in our time of need right now. We ask that you continue to hear our prayers as we share them with you and one another. God, grant us your peace. God, grant us your peace. God of compassion for all the prayers to which we were unable to give words, grant us your peace. You know us, you know what is on our hearts and on our minds. You love us just as we are in our brokenness, our grief, our pain, in our fears and in our struggles. You came to us in human form so that you could walk with us. We humbly ask that you continue to walk with us, stay with us, remain with us always. Amen.
friends, as our time together comes to a close, I invite you to open your heart and your mind to these words. They are excerpts from a poem called Let There Be You by Sarah R. They say to me, things will get better with time. And I think to myself, what good is time? Because I am always waking or sleeping, but constantly dreaming, so time is fleeting. And they say to me, you will get through this. But I think to myself, yeah, but grief is ruthless. And it can't be denied and it can't be tamed, so I sit here and drown in this storm that won't wane. And they say to me, we are sorry for your loss. And I say to myself, me too. Me too. Because what I now know is that when love takes a hold of your heart, it gives a piece of you away. And when that disappears, that empty space aches. You can't fill it. You can't drown it. You can't forget it. You can't ignore it. There's just space and you have to let it be. All I can muster to do is breathe. All I can say is, let there be. I pray, let there be you, God. Let there be. Let there be you surrounding me. Go out into the night with God surrounding you. May you find stillness, peace, quiet. May the night not be what holds your fears but rather what heralds the dawn. You are God's beloved child, and you are never alone. Amen.